Hi, Carl here for Prairie VTV, and today we're taking a look at this lovely little compact cinema rig for the C200, which I've built mainly using Bright Tangerine products. So they've sent us over a load of products to try out, and I thought, what better way to put them to the test but to try and rig out the C200 in as nice a compact cinema style setup as possible. Exactly the sort of stuff that Bright Tangerine is brilliant for. So the heart of this setup is their prototype C200 cage, which you can see here in the middle. This is the prototype, so a couple of things are gonna be changing on this before it releases, but for the main part, this is what we're gonna be looking at. And it's really exciting. It gives an awful lot of extra rigidity to it, but without adding too much weight to the C200, which is absolutely brilliant, as cages and rigs and things can be on the, sometimes on the heavy side. Both the bottom and the top have got nice sliding plates on them so that you can fine tune your centers of balance. And also it means that you can quickly take off all the accessories at the top or all the ones at the bottom and you can slide the camera in and out. It's got some screws on it obviously, but once you undo the screws, you can easily take the camera out to strip it all off. So it's nice and quick to set up. Um, you're looking at several plates here, pieces here obviously that build that kit up. You're looking at the top handle, the top dovetail plate, each side of the cage is a separate little model number, the base plate, the rods, everything like that. But um, they do are going to be doing a nice bundle with all of that, everything that you need for the C200. Including this little plate on the front, which I'm not actually using in this setup, because what this lets you do is it lets you put on the normal EVF mounting bracket from the C200 onto the top here so that you can use the camera like Canon intended with that mountain bracket and this touch screen here at the side and it will flip all around just like it does on the normal C200 but you're replacing their top handle with the bright tangerine top handle. So that's a really nice little addition but it's not needed here in this setup because for my monitoring I've chosen to use the Sakuto Gratical as an a, um, actual viewfinder and as an eyepiece and use the Canon screen with its touch screen here on the side as a focus pullers monitor. So I've got both of these connected with Bright Tangerine's Titan arms with their quick release adapters on them, which are absolutely brilliant. They let you um, basically quickly remove the Titan arms and what they're attached to with 15 millimeter rod setups. We've seen this more and more on articulating arms and I really do like it. I can't stand twisting monitors onto arms with normal screw threads. The 15 millimeter rod way of doing it is just so superior. And Bright Tangerine's one is perhaps one of the slower ones to take on and off, but that's because it's really sturdy. You've got some fantastic locking connectors to make sure that it's, they're not just gonna fall off if the screw gets a little bit loose or anything like that. They're very sturdy and very rigid and they've got some fantastic anti-twist options as well. You'll notice some of these holes on the cage have got uh, the larger 3 8 screw and then they've got lots of little anti-twist mechanisms around them. They do a quick release 50mm rod adapter which will screw directly into that with all those little anti-twist pins in place so that there's no chance of it twisting anywhere like this. They've also then got 50 millimeter rods which can go straight into quarter inch screw threads and that's what's on the Sakuto I and that's what's on the C200 monitor here. And so they do twist a little bit if you force them, um, but that's why you, wherever you can, you'd go for the larger anti-twist ones. And they've got a really clever little adapter that lets you turn two quarter inch threads on a cage or something like that into one larger 3 8 one with all the anti-twist mechanisms. So if you haven't got your bright tangerine cage and one of these lovely um, holes pre-screwed into your cage, you can use one of these to convert two quarter inch holes into that one 3 8 with an anti-twist mechanism. So that's really nice. Let's then look over at the focus pullers side. So what we've done here is we've used another Titan arm to bring the um, touchscreen monitor of the C200 down so that where the focus puller can see it. And the reason I've put it here is so that the focus puller standing here can be looking this way, the same direction as the camera operator. They can see the monitor, control it with the touch screen to move that manual focus assist guide that's so brilliant on the C200. They can see the follow focus and the, all their marks that they've put on here. And they can see their actors and their marks all at the same time. So you're not having to twist your head around when you're focus pulling. You can just with one direction, see all of them, which is really important for focus pullers. 
Then obviously the most important thing for the focus puller is the follow focus itself. This is their revolver, this is their single sided one. What I really like about the revolver as a follow focus is that it's very, very easy and simple to change the way it's configured. So that when you're using different lenses or different setups, we were playing about with a couple of different Canon lenses with this, and I can really easily slide this about. I can slide um, the follow focus to and from and side to side, and then I can easily swap which side the gearing is on. So if I put it on the operator side or on the follow focus assistant side, any of that, it's really, really configurable. And the other thing I really like is these hard stops. So with these quick little push buttons here, you can quickly and easily add hard stops to your follow focus and change where these are, just as simply and as quickly as that, and then you can pop them off, which is really handy. So you set up hard starts and then your actor misses that and comes a little bit closer. You can go, oh, quick, just push that out of the way and then you can get to there to um, your focus point. So it's really important for those hard stops to be really quick to engage or disengage. And then we've got the map box on the front. So this is their Misfit Atom. We've got it mounted onto the 15 millimeter rod setup because we're using the cage with the 15 millimeter rod base plate. Then we've got their black hole adapter, which is gonna block any light coming between the lens and the matte box. And this is great because you can use it with any size lens and it's so quick and easy to take on and off. I really, really enjoy using these, they're brilliant. And the nice thing about the Misfit is one, it's absolutely built like a tank. You can literally drive a car over these and it won't break. And it's feather light. It doesn't add any weight to the setup whatsoever. And when you're operating all day and carrying these up and down mountains and things like that, that's really important. And then we've got focus trays. We've got actually up to three here, which is brilliant. So that you can put three different map boxes on. And if you only want one or two, you can take those out and you can push the entire map box to and from. So I've now got no space to put this third one in because I've brought the entire map box closer to the camera. So it's very, very customizable, which is brilliant about Bright Tangerine stuff. And they're all really, really rigid as well. So I think that's about it. Um, oh no, the other thing I wanted to talk about was some of the camera points of views. We've got the 24 millimeter CNE on here, which is those CNE lenses are nice and small and they're weighted towards the center of the gravity. Stops this rig being too front heavy and it keeps it nice and compact like this. And then the other thing that's keeping it compact is the power. So we're using Switz um, third party batteries for the C200 here. And what's really nice about these is that they've got this DTAP connection. So they don't actually power the camera through the battery mount. They use this little cable to go into the main socket. Um, it plugs into the battery with a DTAP port. But then what that lets you do is have a spare DTAP port on it. So we're running um, at this Hawkwoods cable here, which has got both SDI and DTAP running along one coiled little sheathed cable. So we're taking DTAP power from the SWIT battery and SDI from the C200 up into the Zakuta Gratical. So we've got a spare monitor, the electronic viewfinder and the camera all being powered from this one tiny little battery here, which is really neat and it really helps keep things small and compact. So let me know what you think of this setup in the comment section down below. Would you have done something different? Is there something you would have liked to see here or have we missed something? Let me know and if you're interested in any of these products, just get in touch with our sales team and links to everything I've mentioned here, there should be quite a long list, will be down in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.